Tottenham Hotspur 2, Nottingham Forest nil. Ruthless Harry Kane demonstrated to the newly promoted championship side. Well, from Premier League team now, but up from the championship, you can have the play. You can have the majority of the better chances. You can, in some respects, be the better team. But if you don't finish your dinner, if you don't put that ball in the back of the net, that is all she wrote. Harry Kane with two more goals. The world-class phenom continues. An absolute stellar performance from him. Some will say tapping. I'll say world-class positioning. Spurs are dangerous. Spurs are for real. And can they really, really do what Arsenal were about to do? and become title challengers. Let's go. Oh, absolutely magnificent. What an interesting game that just was. Not an Forest for large parts of the match, you could argue, were the better team. Played the better football. Created an abundance of chances. But for anyone who's only just recently started watching football, what you saw tonight was, or this evening or this afternoon, wherever you're watching around the world, this morning if you're watching over in the, in, in the States, what you saw today was the ruthless nature, the clinical nature of the English Premier League. They played valiantly today, Nottingham Forest, there's no doubt. They, they opened Spurs up at times. They had a lot of the ball. But they weren't able to do anything with it. And of course... This is what's deceptive from it. Spurs actually had as many shots, if not maybe maybe even one or two more shots on goal than what Forrest had, but they had better shooting accuracy and, and a better conversion rate. And listen, they're going to have a... I think they could have a decent season this year, not on Forrest, but just no match really in the end. They had, they had the better play at times. They played scintillating football, especially in that first 35, 40 minutes. They were excellent. But this is the Premier League. And look, Tottenham, some people will say... Not the most entertaining. Some people will say, you know, I, I had a bit of a joke at halftime and said, when did Sean Dyche take over at Tottenham? It's a little bit of a laugh. It isn't the most the most entertaining, stylistic um, football that you'll ever see, but it's effective. And this Tottenham team with Antonio Conte, as long as they back him, will produce better results and trophies in comparison to Maurizio Pochettino that played a prettier style of football. They're resolute, they're hard to beat, and although my prediction at the start of the season was for them to finish behind Chelsea and Arsenal, the one thing I didn't say is that they wouldn't be a very, very good team indeed, and they've been better than I believe they would be so far, Tottenham. They have been better than I expected. They've been stronger than I expected. Harry Kane is back to his scintillating best. They haven't actually got Son going too well yet, but they haven't needed that. Kulisewski's playing well. They haven't really integrated in very many of their new players at all. Basuma, not yet. Richarlison, a few substitute appearances. There's a lot more to come from this Tottenham team this year. And listen, you know, you, you've got City that have started well. Liverpool have been hit and miss. This is going to be an exciting Premier League season, nevertheless, because Spurs are for real. Spurs are dangerous. Spurs are there to capitalise. And I want to ask this question. I want to ask it to you, the audience. Can this Tottenham team put together a title race? I, I, I want to know. I want to know, can Spurs win the league? That's my question to you. Can Spurs win the league? And they challenge. I want to know. I want to know if you believe, any of you believe that. You see them as an out, having an outside chance. Because this isn't the same Tottenham team of a few years ago. The same as this isn't the same Arsenal team as a few years ago. I want to get people's thoughts on that. Um, we're getting some no's. We've got some yes. Like, like, literally, there's a big mix. Conte is just what H7 writes. In there, uh, Spurs detective says yes. Uh, Skill says no. Uh, H7 says yeah. It just says Conte. We've got yes and yes. Uh, next year, maybe, is what Mark's got to say. Uh, Spurs will win the league, is what Jan Aiden has got to say here. Uh, no, they can't, is what Ilyas says. Uh, nothing coming from Tottenham. They will be outclassed when they play better teams. You say that, and they, they were outclassed by Chelsea, but they still got a point. And that's the danger of Tottenham. That is the danger of Tottenham this year. And they look very, very good indeed. They really, really do. Uh, playing like that, they expect to win trophies. Joke club. I mean, they won the game. Uh, top four is going to be tight as, as F this season. And I think that's the truest thing that can be said. It is going to be a very, very tight campaign indeed. I don't think you can get yourselves away from that. A bad game today, but we move on uh, to better on Wednesday. And I wouldn't even necessarily call it a 
bad game. I don't even know if that's the right phrase for it. I, I don't know if that's the right phrase for it. I don't think it was a. I don't think it was a bad game by Tottenham. This is how they're going to play against progressive teams. They are going to sit back. They are going to absorb, and they are going to counter attack. And you can see that if you actually look at the heat maps. I'm going to put these up on the screen here. These are from uh, who scored. Let me let me put this on the screen so you can you can all see what I'm seeing. You can tell by the heat maps that's that that is how Spurs are going to play. And I'm not even digging Spurs out here. I'm just being I'm just being real. If we put this up on the screen, you can see the heat maps here. Spurs sat back and countered. The Spurs are on the right hand side. In case in case some of you can't see, they're over here. So they sat back, they absorbed the ball, and they countered. Forest with a more progressive side, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that you're that they're not, not going to create chances because when you go back to the the actual statistics and breakdown of the game, eighteen shots to seventeen, they still create the shots. You go to the the pass succession, go to here, thirteen key passes each, thirteen chances created each in that football match. So it it's one of those things for me where I, I kind of look at it from the angle of it. Yes, I totally understand that certain people want to see more. Certain people want to see more creativity, more, more attacking. But there's more than one way to skin a cat. And there'll be a bit of banter for it, but this Tottenham team is going to be dangerous this year. I've said it all along. I've said it all along. And uh, the way they play today, you're going to get that against the majority of the progressive uh, football playing sides. Uh, Conte wins trophies. Uh, w, uh, w, this uh, this style, it's proven, is what Jake's uh, Snacks has got to say. Uh, Tottenham are looking very stable and people have to put some respect on Hugo Lloris, one of the undermined goalkeepers in European football. Like, I think as a shot stopper, he, he, very much is, he very much is disrespected. People don't give him as much credit uh, as I believe they should. So you're very much, you're very much right there, my friend. You truly, truly are. Uh, park the bus against Forrest. But that's Antonio Conte, if you want to call it that. He will sit there, he'll absorb and he'll counter. And yeah, okay, if if Johnson, Gibbs, White and Lingard were better quality football players, if they, if they were better at football, and I don't even mean that as a dig, if they had a bit more clinical edge, they might have scored today. They may have scored, but that, that's the way they're going to play. There was there was times when Antonio Conte's Chelsea team got played off the park uh, in terms of ability-wise, but then they would still win them football matches, and that is what's key. Of course, they can, they, they can have more chances than Arsenal, is what Pep uh, says there, I don't really get the correlation there, my friend. Uh, Leicester play the same kind of football, but look at what happened to them when Chelsea lost the player and they had to come out of their shell, is what Curtis Royal's got to say. Uh, who's who's next with a comment here? Conte needs to drop Son. He's out of form. Well, that's what's really interesting because Tottenham haven't had the ability to even consider dropping someone like a Son in years. Now they do. Now they might. Now they now they can. Now they can turn around and say, well, Richarlison can come in as an example and give themselves an extra string to their bow. Uh, Terry, thoughts on, on maybe Liverpool going for Ruben Neves? Uh, that would be a fantastic piece of business. If Ruben Neves goes to Liverpool, uh, I'd be gutted because that stops him ever coming Man United. And I've always wanted him to become uh, a, a Manchester United player. Uh, we're going to give away um, some more... Um, free memberships on this stream. If we hit 600 likes, we're going to give away 10 free memberships to you, our viewers. So get smashing that like button for us right now. Uh, people don't like, and I'm going to do a little thing on top of this as well. If we hit 1,000 likes, I'm going to give away 20 membership. What I'm going to do to one of our members this month, if you're a member of the Football Terrace by the end of August, so you've got three days basically, I'm going to give away, I'm going to pick one lucky winner to win a PlayStation 5. Or the brand new Xbox, whichever one you want. We're going to pick one at random and give that out to you. Uh, so you can either become a member yourself or you can get the likes up and maybe you'll get picked uh, as a lucky dip as a member. Up to you. Uh, Josh King here, uh, my guy. I hope you're well, bruv. Says, uh, people don't like our football, we uh, but we create high-quality chances playing this way. Back-to-back -back clean sheets without Romero and Richarlison look fire. And do you know what's funny? Like, again, mate, there, there's banter and then there's being real. And I'll tweet some banter. But when I'm on the terrace, I'll, I'll generally speak how I really feel. And I, I said all, I've said all summer, I think Spurs will be dangerous. I, I, didn't think, I didn't think you would be as good as I'm seeing right now. You're better than I expected. But you look dangerous. You look powerful. You look strong. And I, I think when your new signings get fully integrated as well, 
that's where the level change comes. I think when Basuma's in this team, I think when Richarlison's being used used and starting some games, I even think with Jed Spence as well, like, I know there's a lot of rumours that maybe him and uh, Conte don't get on, but I think if he gets a run of games and can show that he's what he's about, um, as good as Emerson Royale has been, I think Jed Spence is a level above him. So th- that could be, listen, this 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 team could be serious. This team could be, could we, imagine this, we, we could have two North London teams in a title race this year if both keep improving. <laughs> that would be colossal. We've never, we've never had anything like that before. Let's see. Uh, let's have a look at some of these comments here. I think Kane benches, I think Kane benches Tottenham will score lots more goals. You think if Harry Kane is on the bench, Tottenham score, shush, shush. You were looking at arguably the greatest goal scorer in Premier League history, but you think Spurs will score more without him. Uh, Liverpool will have to pay uh, more than 70 million to sign Ruben before the window closes. That's from Speaking Facts. And look, yeah, look, if they, they want to get him. They're going to have to pay the money. Um, Liverpool do have a knack, though, of being able to get players cheaper than what other players get quoted. So uh, let's, let's see what they're able to do there. I, I'm very intrigued indeed to see how that kind of works out. Uh, I am. Uh, Kane is the plug or the power. I don't know what that's meant to represent. <laughs> without without Kane, Spurs are dead. Listen, both. Listen, the second goal, a lot of strikers would have scored. The first goal today. It looked like a bit of a P-roller that the goalie should have got to. But Dean Henderson was blindsided, couldn't see. And the accuracy of that shot was out of this world from Kane. Most strikers, Lewandowski, Benzema, Haaland, Mbappe maybe. There's only a handful of strikers that are scoring at Ronaldo. There's only a handful of strikers in the world that are scoring that goal. It looks simplistic and easy, but do you know how I know, you know it isn't? Because you barely see other strikers score goals like that. Or even... It's just, and that's why Harry Kane has so many goals. He scores goals that other players can't. He just does. Most other players can't. It's probably the better way of phrasing it. Everyone talking, uh, taking, talking about Kane, but Hoyerberg is underrated. Listen, I thought Hoyerberg had a really good game again today, and Hoyerberg seemed to have upped his levels because Hoyerberg knows his place is under threat with Basuma coming in, and this is exactly what a football club needs. It needs Royale, Hoyerberg, you know, as an example. Sanchez, it needs these players, even the likes of Kane and, 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 and Son with Richarlison coming in. They need to feel under pressure for their position. They need to feel like if I'm not performing, if I'm not working hard, if I'm making mistakes, my manager's dropping me. And if that happens, you know, your, your team can go on to achieve some really, really good things. But you need that internal competition to manifest itself onto the football pitch. And we're seeing that from Arsenal. We're seeing it from Tottenham. And listen, I still think Liverpool are going to come back and be very good this year. We know City are going to be there or thereabouts. And I still think there's a lot more to come from Chelsea. This is going to be a crazy, crazy season. Uh, this is from Lewis. It says Spurs beat Forest 2-0. And now we're saying we th- 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 uh, can they win the league? Are you on drugs or what? Yeah, I'm asking a question. A, que- a question is not a statement, uh, my dear friend Lewis. Uh, I-, I don't know if you're aware of that. If, uh, if you're at school and the teacher says, um, can you tell me what you did this weekend? She's not saying she knows what you did this weekend. She's asking a question. I want to know if people think Spurs can win it. And if, if not, why? Like, it's this is how you stimulate conversation. I'm sorry to say this to rival fans. If every conversation about something you don't like is, no, why ask it? Dumb question. You kill football conversation. It's stupid. It's dumb. And with the football terrace, we talk about more than one team. So I'm asking the question today, how good do people think Tottenham are now? How good could they become over the course of this season? And in time, being managed by Antonio Conte. That is what we're asking today, my friend. That is what the Football Terrace is about. And I'm sorry to say this, you won't get that on single club channels. Because why would they? The the point of those channels is to put down all their rivals. That isn't what a channel like the Football Terrace does. We're here for open conversation. So we're asking questions. Um, Please learn to differentiate between question and statement, my friend. It will serve you very well in life, my friend. Especially when you get a girlfriend or you get married. Because questions and statements can be taken the wrong way. Trust me. Uh, let's have a little look here. If Spurs win the league, Conte is the GOAT manager because it's Spurs. Listen, if Antonio Conte wins the league with Spurs, the guy needs a statue. He needs a statue. He really, really does. I predict Spurs in the top four. Nothing more, no trophies is what's being said here. Uh, when was the last time Spurs won a trophy? It would have been like 2009, long time ago. A lot of you weren't born. Or a lot of you were babies, you know, on the mum's breast back then. A lot of you tuning in. 
Does Richarlison start the next game? I think it's a fair question because Son hasn't had a good season so far. And I mean that with respect. He hasn't had a good season so far. By by his standards, what is it? One assist this season? Um, no goals. He, had, you know, he was good against Southampton, but he hasn't really been very good in the last three games. So I think this is where Antonio Conte, and it may be now, it may be a further game later. And you're playing two games in a week. So it's actually a really sensible time to rotate stroke quote unquote drop someone but i think son this is what you this is what spurs need to do you know what son you haven't been performing we're going to give richarlison a go when richarlison comes in maybe it's on wednesday if he goes and delivers scores a brace the message that sends across the dressing room is huge so yeah that could happen uh, alan joins me now to have his say uh what are you saying now yeah um three points performance still not there so i've got to be critical with that because like I was saying, under Nuno, obviously it's better than Nuno, but it's not, you know, like in the fact that it was poor performances. But we get the po- uh, we get the points where you know, so for me that's a plus. But there's loads of performances like touching on Son. He's just not at it. He needs to be dropped because if players aren't if uh, players aren't performing and still playing, and you got the people on the bench going, well, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to get on the team. You then stop them wanting to improve or you know trying to get into the team. So for me, stuff like that has to change. Um, the defence looks poor without Romero in there. So slow, get caught out of position. Dyer, Sanchez, all you know, loads of them. For me, I don't understand why Hoiberg's still in the team. So slow, his passing's horrendous. Basuma should be in there. So I don't know why we're not making these changes and bringing the new players in to f- freshen it up. But I suppose ten points out of twelve in hindsight looks good, but. If we go into, we've got in a couple of weeks, you've got Man City and Arsenal coming up. If we play anything like that against them teams, we're getting torn apart. It's as simple as that. You can't, I know people then say, but look at Man City last season when you defended and counter attacked, but that was a one off. That's not going to happen two times, you know, three times in a row against Man City. So things have to change. Mm. You know, we've got the points on the board, but for me, it's not the best performance. It hasn't been, even against Wolves, wasn't a great performance. And Chelsea was horrendous. Um- I've re- I kind of listen. I haven't. I haven't written, sp- written Spurs off this year. I, mm. I, I predicted them to come fifth, and that's not because I said you were going to be bad. It's because I actually, I think Arsenal are going to be really good, and I think Sp- Chelsea are going to be really good. Mm. I said it'd be very close between you all. Now, if I get it wrong, I'm going to be wrong by a few points. So I don't really care. Mm. But something I did say last year, mm. and someone's just tweeted. Jess has just tweeted about this, and I kind of re- I remember that I said it, and I kind of forgot this train of thought. There's a lot of pressure in the Premier League for every club to play expansive attacking football. Hmm. That is what could play into Tottenham's hands this year. That's why I'm asking the question, could Spurs title race? Barring one or two of the smaller clubs in the league, everybody tries to play open and expansive football, meaning you've Hmm. always got the opportunity to counterattack against them. I think maybe like there, there there is an argument, and this is me making an argument rather than making a statement to say, Maybe just maybe with your quality of player and Antonio Conte, you're almost like the the kryptonite to the to this kind of new style of football that's overtaken the Premier League, where everybody wants to be uh, possession based, the, the main attackers pressing the ball high, you know, a million miles an hour. Where you guys are more like a sponge. It's almost this absorb, this absorb, this absorb, and when you're ready, bang, you you, you counter attack if that makes sense. And it's going to be an intriguing year. And, and I don't necessarily think that the way you play, like you were opened up a little bit too much today. I think a few yeah. players, there were, there were times today where Davis, especially, I thought today there were times where uh, Dyer, you saw Dyer for what Dyer really is today, yeah. where he got spun a little bit and things like that. But um, yeah, I think you need to be a bit more resolute in your one on one options and things like that. But yeah. I, I still think you've got, once Basuma is integrated, once Romero, how long is Romero out for? Uh, well, they said about three to four weeks originally, and then they said about, they said it was about a week. So hopefully he's back. Hopefully he's back for the next game against West Ham. But I don't know. It, our treatment table, I mean, last season, take um, Skip, for example. He was only meant to be out a couple of weeks. He ended up being out for the rest of the season. And Conte was annoyed at our medical staff because he couldn't get a clear idea of what was going on. So I don't believe, I don't trust what they say. Romero probably out injured for the rest of the season, though, and our, our medical team is absolutely horrendous. But uh, hmm. yeah, for me, the, you know, there's loads... You can say about absorbing like a sponge, but let's go back to Mourinho. He wanted to play that way. I know Conte's better than Mourinho currently now as manager, but you see the, t- the type of players we've got in, 
can't do that for 90 minutes against bigger teams and on a consistent basis. You have to play. But we showed when we played football last season, we went away to Leeds like towards the end of the season. Uh, obviously, Norwich on the final day and we can hit, the, smash these teams apart. We can do it. We've got the attacking line for it. But I think what he's doing is just setting us to defend a bit deep. We're sitting too far deep. If we're up five or ten yards further forward, then we have a problem. But for me, there's certain trash in this team that still needs to go. I don't know why he's not put... I mean, for me, still Royal was shocking today as well. I want to see someone different in there. I want to put Jed Spence in just see how he does. Just something different to make to, to lift mm. the tempo of the team because at times it's just it's bad. Don't get me wrong. Ten points out of twelve, I can't complain, but it just seems like it's going the same way as what Nuno did or uh, Conte did. And that's in the results. Basically, the, they dry up and then we end up losing and then we fight for sixth or seventh. Whereas, you know, it just seems it's going that route again. Maybe the team will get better and maybe new team players will come in. But for me, it's just it's awful football at the moment. And I like to, I know you don't always win because Poch played really good football, but I just don't want it going back to what we've seen in recent seasons where we start well, get a few good results and then all of a sudden we fall apart and we're battling for fifth, sixth and seventh again. I understand. I do understand that train. I do get that. Um, yeah. Look, let's see what happens though, because this, this is the last round of games before midweek football starts that you've now got two premier league games in a week. Then Europe starts for us all. And in amongst that, you've got the league cup. There's a little break as well. I didn't realize there was an international break before the world cup, which is annoying. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, according unless I'm missing something, when I'm looking at the Premier League fixtures, there's a gap. There's a gap in the last weekend of September. There's no fixtures, and maybe something's happening then, and I don't know what it is, but I can't see the games. But maybe my maybe I've counted it wrong. But yeah, I mean, look, two games a week start now. So what that means for your for your bench players and squad players is now you're going to get your chance to show you're good enough for the first team. I think that's key. But yeah. like I've said all along, look, people always confuse, like they confuse me saying, I think Spurs could be really good this year. And then me predicting them coming fifth. I just think that's because Chelsea and Arsenal are going to be equally as amazing. And it was just my thought. They might pip you to it, but it's going to be close. I think Spurs are just, what I like about Spurs though, is that you're doing it very different to everybody else. In fairness, Thomas Tuchel also gets accused of being a little bit negative, a little bit pragmatic. What is it they call him? But like a, uh, to 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 ban or something, a ball, whatever it is, um, you know, terrorist football and all this kind of nonsense. Like, but there's more more than one way to skin a cat, and you know, it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. A super chat here says, "Do do do you and the Muppets uh, remember what I said about Liverpool dead midfield? Arsenal still won't finish in the top four, is what Michael Ramsey's got to say." Um, yeah. Uh, uh, David here says uh, Xbox tell my two year old put something in mine two days ago. Milk cap. Yeah. Listen, if we hit it, listen, what we're going to do at the end of the month, if you're a member of the football series, we're going to give away a console to you. Uh, if you want to become a member, you can sign up now link in the description, or if we get past 600 likes, we're going to give another 10 memberships away free. So make sure you're smashing the like button for us. Uh, thank you very much. Indeed. In terms of the start of the season, I want to ask you out like who's impressed you the most premier league wise so far. Um, I would have I would be lying if I didn't say Arsenal. Let's be honest. But um, if you look at the caliber of teams they beat, apart from Palace on the opening day, which you can catch a team cold like we did Man City last year, you know people would say it's smaller teams, and they started well against smaller teams last season. Um, after the first three defeats, but it, I agree, it's something different about them. But for me, also, I do like Brighton. I think Brighton are playing really well. I think everyone's overlooking Brighton, not saying they're going to challenge or anything, but Brighton losing Kukurea and Basuma, everyone thought Brighton were going to be like there for the taking. And they've literally, you know, proven everyone wrong. Um, so for me, they've been the standout team as well. Uh, but yeah, if I was to put anyone in that category, obviously Man City goes without saying, but Arsenal have played the better football for me. Um, but will they continue? I mean, they've got you guys coming up soon. You guys turn the corner. It's at Old Trafford. They tend generally tend not to do well there. Well, I mean, I mean, that's, that's I mean, it's going to be an acid test for, for everybody. I, I would say this. I mean, I, I consider the, the Premier League season to have started after Maguire was dropped. So United have been very impressive since then. But I'm only joking. Now, I think look, Brighton pound for pound, Leeds United pound for pound are up there. Arsenal have been brilliant. Um, do you just feel with Tottenham? I think mm -hmm. there was so much expectation on Tottenham to be good. It's kind of gone unnoticed that you level on points after four games with City. You haven't. Even though today you were being bombarded at times, you didn't look like you were going to lose. And that, for me, as a as a as a neutral watching, yeah, 
that's what's in, the most intriguing thing about Spurs. You did not look like you were going to concede them. I've watched a lot of games, so even so far this season with Gunas. I've watched some games with Chelsea fans. I've watched some games with Spurs fans. And they've been, oh, like nervous the whole game. And I get why you're nervous when your team's playing. But as someone that, like in, in actuality in these games, I've had no real dog in the fight. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, you're going to win. I just, like there was no feeling. I just didn't feel like they were going to have enough quality in Forest to be able to put you to the sword. But we'll see what happens in the next few games, mate. It's been a good start to the season for you. Out. I saw a couple of comments, people saying, oh, we started well, what are you complain about? Okay, we'll start well coming back. But supposing we do come up where we play like this and we end up losing two out of the next three or, or like we lose to Man, you know, uh, Man City in Arsenal and we get a point against West Ham and then it's one point out of six or uh, one point out of nine, then people will be complaining, like I'm saying now, about the style of football or it's not good enough. So, yeah, on paper, it's looking good, 10 out of 12 points, but we've got tougher games coming up. And if we play like that and we get picked apart, then the same fans who are criticising me now for having these faults will probably be doing the same thing as me. So I might just be a bit ahead of the curve, but it's one of them. If we our performances improve, then we can easily get uh, results against these teams coming up. But at the moment, the way it stands now, I think we get picked apart with how Man City and how Arsenal are playing if we don't improve. Yeah, it's going to be an intriguing one to see uh, what direction it goes in, people. Listen, everyone smash the like and share the button. Alan, always a pleasure to speak, my friend. Take care, and we'll yes. speak soon. Thank you. Thank you. As a comment here, it says, style matters. Play like this all season without winning is awful. Um, even worse teams play more progressive football than, than, than this against smaller teams. But I look at it this way. Style matters to certain football clubs. And I'll give you an example. I don't think you could... You couldn't. Jose Mourinho won th two trophies. I'm not going to count this community shield. Had a second in the league. Best points total since Fergie. But the football was boring and, 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 and too defensive. And the fans didn't want it. That's because there's a rich history of playing expansive football and winning trophies. And I'm not going to sound like an elitist. But when your club doesn't win trophies, I don't think you can bemoan a style if it then brings you trophies. You know, Pochettino played beautiful football but didn't win a dime. If Conte brings in a... a, a, brings in a a League Cup, an FA Cup, a Europa League, and some title challenges. It's the greatest period in Spurs' history since Bill Nicholson. And I, so I think there's different levels to this. Um, and I don't think Spurs' football is ugly. In fact, it actually makes for a good spectacle. Because, it, like, they're sitting back and absorbing and counterattacking. The other teams expand. Like, it, there's some jeopardy in the game. Like, I quite enjoy it, if I'm being honest. The style of football isn't brilliant. But I actually prefer it to, like a team that has 85% of the ball and the other team barely make a chance. That for me is boring as a spectacle. It's brilliant football from that, that the team that's dominating, but it isn't a spectacle. And I like a little bit of a spectacle, if that makes sense. Uh, next on the show with me today, we've got Abdul. Abdul is a Tottenham fan. What are you saying, my guy? Yeah, man, happy for the performance. You know, definitely got the three points. That's pretty much all we're asking for. Like, I do understand there's going to be a lot of Spurs fans that's going to be disappointed with how we play and how we played in the past uh, four games. But listen, man, I think there is a lot of improvements that we can make, not only just by the play side, but in terms of the players. I know a lot of Spurs fans are eager to get on, you know, the Spences and the Pesumas, but we have so many games coming up. Like, we're basically playing a game every 72 hours. Like, every three days you're playing a game. So, there's going to be time for the new players to gel in. I'm actually quite happy that, you know, like, in the beginning of the season, you just stick to the players that you know. You stick with Hoybergs, you know. Obviously, guys like Perisic is such a massive difference between him and Cessna that you have to play Perisic. But, like, again, like, a lot of people, they want to bench um, Hillman's son for Richarlison, but... I think it's a, it's a slippery slope. It's you're in a tough situation because obviously if you bench Youngman's son, you don't know how he's going to react. I know a lot of people think you know you bench Youngman's son, then you're going to make him work for his spot, and when he comes back, he's going to be hungry or he's going to score goals. But it doesn't always work like that. Sometimes whenever the player is benched, their confidence is low, and even when you do put him in the starting lineup, they're not back to their best. So, listen, man, Richarlison won't get his time to start. The sumo will, will start. They're going to get his time to start. We have a bunch of games so coming I, up. I, I, I get that, though. Question I've got for you. If, if Son goes backwards, if he's got competition and gets dropped, does that not make him a liability? Does that make him like the opposite to a winner? Like a winner goes, oh, I, I'll show you dropping me. I'll be even better next time. Like, surely you shouldn't be pandering to players and it should be, a you know, rewarding starting, starting <laughs> positions for meritocracy. 
Yeah, I, I totally understand that. But um, yeah, like he may not have the winner mentality of like, you know, what a lot of fans want. But at the end of the day, whether he has a winning mentality or not, he puts goals on the board. He puts up numbers. Like whether his performances are poor, the thing about Richard, the thing about Son is he can easily just score two goals of having two shot opportunities. And I think Hillman Son is like a perfect reflection of our team in general. Like we don't create, we don't really play well. We're not, we don't really play these intricate passes, but when we have those opportunities, we're clinical. And Son is still a top five most clinical player in the Premier League, in my opinion. Well, at least the numbers back that up. And he, like right now he's playing poor. And I know a lot of people probably say, well, look at Richarlis, he came on, had a great assist. But I just still think you still need to stick with Hillman Son and just have a little bit more loyalty in his in his play because it's not you're not guaranteed that Richarlison will come in and you'll do what Son can do. That's not really guaranteed. Richarlison is a good player, and I think this is a good role for him. You know, like around the 65th minute where we need energy, we can bring him on, and he has another dimension to this team. And I think until we actually have to start. Richarlison, because there's going to be moments where you have to start those players. No, I, I, it's I, too I, much. Yeah, no, I, I get, I get that, my friend. I want to ask you this question: Can you win the league this year, or is that a step too far for this side? Listen, if if you think Spurs can win the league, then you have to think that also Arsenal can win the league, because the only only way we can actually be in this conversation is all dependent upon Man City. To be quite honest with you. Like, obviously, if he asks us Spurs fans, we're going to say no because we're expecting Man City to get 90-plus points. And do we think Spurs is at this level where we can get 90-plus points in, in, a, in, a, in a season that's going to be as stacked as it is when we're playing every three days from now until pretty much end of the season? I'm going to say no. But, again, it all depends upon Man City. So if you think yeah. Arsenal can challenge for the league, then you have to also think Spurs can also. Because... I yeah. Again, we're, we're, such a, we're such a dangerous team. We don't need to create that many chances. And listen, if you have teams like Nottingham Forest, just teams that's going to give us space at the back, then you also have to think that, you know, teams that are higher up pitch, higher up the table, sorry, teams like Brighton is also going to be uh, attacking us. Like, we're going to be able to counterattack against any team in the Premier League. And that's dangerous when you have a, a, a front. But that's a, long, a very long way of saying, no, I don't think we can win the title. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get to these points. Let's get to these points. No, yeah, I, yeah. I hear you, my friend. I do. Look, look, I think there's still a way to go, but there's something about this Tottenham team that's scary. Abdul, always a pleasure to speak, my friend. We'll chat again yeah. soon, my guy. Thank you very much yeah. indeed. Uh, Dex here, one of our members with a member milestone chat. Uh, says uh, parking the bus every game will end in tears, uh, which is interesting. And Harold says, I said without winning. I hear you there, my friend. Thank you. Uh, Orchie's on the show next. Orchie's a big Spurs fan. What are you saying, bro? Hello. Good evening. Uh, another professional job done, I think, in my opinion. Um, obviously, it's the fourth game of the season. Um, the first month of the Premier League is always, you know, it's always topsy-turvy. Um, you know, when you think back up until a couple of years ago, um, like even... Kane uh, couldn't get a goal in August. You know, there was a running joke that was going. So in view of all of that, I, I'm really pleased. You know, that's like three wins out of four. You know, and we went away to Chelsea. We got a point, even though probably last year when we played them, we would have lost that game by, you know, three, four nil. Uh, so those are really encouraging signs. Um, some of the plays were off the pace again today, but I, I really put that down to just getting that match form going, Terry. Yeah, no, and, and I get that. And again, I didn't even think you guys were like off it as well. I think sometimes as well, what we need to be very, very mindful of um, is we have to be respectful to, um, sorry, excuse me, uh, to Forest and how well they played as well. Like yeah. they were absolutely on it, if that made sense. So sometimes I feel like sometimes we we, we do have this ability to be really disrespectful as a, as a, as a footballing world, especially in, 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 in the, the elite sense with the top six, we kind of the way we kind of talk about um, our club versus everybody else. Oh, we were poor today. But actually, Forrest were really, really good as well. What, what's your take on some Spurs fans saying that Son needs to be benched and Richarlison given a chance because he hasn't played well in three games? What's your, what's your views on that? Um, yeah, I think maybe to freshen things up, I would say, I mean, Son, you know, he's also being South Korean. He's done a lot of traveling, like uh, when Spurs went to... South Korea for the preseason. He was already there. Um, and yeah, I mean, he has looked off the pace. He's probably the, 
that's the most frustrating thing. I mean, it's he's still getting into certain positions in games. He's still getting those one or two chances. Uh, and those chances are chances that he would normally put away. Uh, but he seems to be missing him at the moment. So, and, you know, sometimes, it, I, mean, I mean, Son has been doing it at the top, top level for us for such a long time. Um, I can't feel... I basically feel a little bit bad for him. But then I think it might do him good to spend like maybe a couple of games where he's the one who's coming on like the 70th, 75th minute and maybe give Richarlison a run in the team. Um, like, yeah, I mean, I'm, because you can't, you, you can't have to. At the end of the day, with the amount of games that are going to come up, literally starting from this week where you go a midweek game and then the following week, the Champions League and the European games start. So whether they like it or not, they are going to start this rotation. They're going to have to, um, yeah, to yeah, keep yeah. up with all, all the games. And it's just, you know, might as well just, you know, start it now because uh, like, let's say Richardson starts on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever we're playing, um, then we've got another game at the weekend. So, um, and then maybe Son starts for the Champions League game. I don't, I, you know, I don't know. But well, that's that's, that's, a, that's a really fair point, as you say. Now, now that that's there, it's it's gonna it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to do um, in terms of dropping in permanently. But I think that the one thing I would say, whether it's now or in the future, that's what winning teams have a a a a, a kind of. There has to be an element of competitiveness in the training ground. I remember watching some training footage years ago now at Man United when, when we were good. And it was a tackle that Vidic put in on, on, on Rooney. And I I think if that happened now and was on Twitter, everyone would go, what a disgrace. And it was they were talking about training. And Wayne Rooney said that's how training was every day. It was like a real match. He went, the competitiveness at training is what made us the best team on the football pitch at the weekends. And I think being dropped, I think your position being under threat, I think going in hard on each other in training is how it has to be. Yes, you sometimes run the risk of, a player losing confidence or someone getting injured or whatever it may be. But that's how the best teams in the past and present produce winners. Like to no That's why when I, I, Abdul was like, I don't know, he might lose confidence. I sit there and I, I, I've watched my club where fans are like, oh, we shouldn't even buy another. I remember Man United fans saying this, and I know he's not playing anymore because of the terrible thing we all believe that he's done. But I remember when Man United were linked with Erling Haaland, there were... I would say 70% of the Man United fan base said, no, 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 please, please don't buy him. It might stop Greenwood from progressing. My view was if Greenwood's going to be good enough to be better than Haaland, he's going to be better than him regardless. Like it, it was, it, do you get where I'm coming from? And I think that's, yeah, the, yeah, no, definitely. that's the mantra that I think Spurs fans need to promote and push because that gets into the dressing room. Like the fans love you, Son, but if you ain't playing well, they want you out because they want to win. And I think that for me is where Spurs fans need to change their mindset. And I think that will yeah, seep definitely. into that dressing room, really. That's what I'm saying, my friend. But yeah, you, you are hang on that there's got to be rotation now, that there has got to be rotation now, no doubt. And, and they've got they've got to be tearing themselves to get into that team. Like, I mean, listen, if you and people like you and me, imagine if we were like lucky enough to be at that level of footballers, we'd want to, regardless of what the manager wants, you and me, you know, you'd want to play on a Saturday and a Wednesday and a Saturday and a Wednesday again. That's what, that's the kind of hunger that you got to breed in that group of players. If, if they're going to genuinely challenge for top things, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, like exactly what you said about the old Manchester United, you know, uh, under Alex Ferguson. I, I just remember like, you know, nobody was, you know, I remember like Manchester United would be three nil up and then he'll take off, um, like I, I'm just saying, like Roy Keynes or you know whoever, um, and then they'll be like getting on the you know subs bench, just like throwing stuff, going, oh, why is it taking me off? Like nobody wanted to be taken off, but you know that's just that's that's how you breed that kind of winning mentality, that kind of competitiveness. It's not just about competing against other teams; it's about competing against your each other as well, um, and that's that's the way you're gonna you know kind of have that that whole that, this thing about winning mentality kind of thing but i mean i'm still i'm still excited to be honest as i said like this early season form um i mean the form of a team doesn't really start settling until like september october anyway so i'm not too worried about some of these performances yes we were a little bit we weren't i wouldn't say we were poor against wolves uh, but we certainly we weren't at the races in the first half but we came back in the second half in this game it was a bit of an open game but we, like you said earlier in the um, stats, like we created a hell of a lot of chances and we were at some at some points, we were really wasteful with that. So I think with game time, with further games coming, I think probably by September, October time, we're probably going to, we will be putting some of those away um, and hopefully plays like Son and stuff will pick up their performances. And uh, who knows, we might be in, in, the, in the mix, you know, that conversation you were having about whether Arsenal and Spurs can challenge. <laughs>
Yeah, I really no, hope so. I'd like to be in the mix. I don't, I don't think I don't think we're capable. I don't think either Arsenal or Spurs have a chance. But I think they're both quite. You know, there's good chance that they could be in the mix till, and that's the that's. Mm, I, I kind opinion. of I kind of feel a little bit like, and I want to make sure I say this in the in the right way. I don't necessarily think that. How do I put this? I don't think City are going to be as good as they were last year, points wise. I, and the reason I say that is not because they're going to be maybe even a worse team. Spurs are better. Chelsea are going to be better. Arsenal are going to be better. By the way, Man United will be better this season than they were last year. We've already started to see the green shoots of that. Liverpool are still going to be a good team. Newcastle don't look like they're slowing up, as an example. So, yeah. mathematically speaking, and I know there are lots of different ways and ways around this goes. There's a maximum amount of points that can be di- that is distributed between th- between 20 teams, and if you get four, five, six, seven teams that are all better than last year, logically speaking, unless all the bottom teams are much worse, logically speaking, that City might be City could be as good as last year, but be eight to nine points worse off. Does that make sense? And then it's it about is. which one of the teams around them capitalise. And I think that for me is why I do think, and there's still more progression that Spurs and Arsenal and Chelsea need to have. But I wouldn't be writing them off just yet. But I do get the logic around people saying, no, they won't be. Orchie, always a pleasure to speak football with you, my friend. We'll chat again soon, buddy. Top man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mourinho played more progressive football. I don't know if he did. I don't think... Like, Mourinho's football in his heyday was, was was as good, if not better, than Antonio Conte's. But Mourinho lost, has lost his way a little bit, no doubt. No doubt about it. Uh, Maria Williams, go to the terrace chat. Welcome back. Um, oh, I, I, I starred the wrong thing. I missed your super chat. Hang on, let me go back. I thought I started the super chat, and I obviously didn't. Um, Chelsea weren't moaning at Jose when when they won. Uh, winning is what matters. I, I trust Conte. His football isn't as defensive as Jose's either. I agree. Um, I don't think uh, we, we will win the league, but people saying about Park the Bus, um, are they forgetting Conte and Jose both won the league? If you are winning, trust your manager. That's what the players need. And the difference is, I felt under Joto, the players weren't bought into him. Uh, Nuno was quite pragmatic. The players weren't bought into him. You can tell the, the, the Spurs players love, love, absolutely love playing um, for Antonio Conte. And that, that, that for me is a real, real big part of this that I don't think should be um, ignored. Cal's on the line now. Cal is a Spurs fan. What are you saying, Cal? Hey, you doing, man? You good? I'm good. I'm good. Talk to me about tonight, t- today's performance and win. It's, it's a much better performance compared to Wolves. 110%. And we definitely grew more into the game, again, compared to like the first half against Wolves. But my God, they look absolutely shattered from like the 50th minute onwards with half an hour left. They just look absolutely shattered. And there's a kind of worry... It's like if this if they look tired right now before this big massive schedule starts, what the hell's gonna happen? Like what's what's gonna happen? You thought you later looked tired. Right? You thought you looked tired. Yeah, d- definitely in the second half against Forest, definitely. They, like they, I don't know if you noticed it, like the front three pretty much couldn't win. Um I think from the sixtieth minute onwards, like they really, they were really struggling to run. But again, it's this is something that will maybe come out later on. Like, <clears throat> sorry, uh, this is something that will come out later on. Like maybe like six months down the line, other teams will be absolutely shattered, and we'll we'll be fine. We'll be able to nick if we're a goal down. We'll be able to nick. Um, you know. I, the thing is, though, I don't think you did look tired. And I actually think with the way you play football, legitimately, you're not going to exhaust yourself because you're, you're not chasing the ball. You're not running around like headless chickens. You're, you're just you're, you're absorbing um, attacks. You're kind of reserving energy and energy. Oh, and into counters. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I agree with that. I, I think that I, I don't think it's about tiredness. I think it's just about. Look, you're gonna get. You're always gonna get a lot of stick when you go on the timeline. You're always gonna get stick for the way that you play and the way that you do things um, with Antonio Conte as your manager because people always go after the pragmatic managers. But I don't know if you look tired though. Uh, you got the three points today though. Yeah, you're in the hunt for everything. Uh, thanks for calling in, Cal. Really appreciate it, my guy. Take care, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Um, listen, everyone who's tuned in tonight, a massive thank you to each and every single one of you. Make sure you're smashing like buttons and subscribing to the Football Terrace before you go anywhere. We're back tomorrow. So, uh, we're going to have the, the Dundee show with Dean Jones. We've got top six show and much, much more for you. Please make sure you're smashing like buttons and subscribing to the Football Terrace. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all soon. Thank you.